Welcome everybody to the testimony. I'm here with a very special guest, Sylvester Mukuberi. Sylvester, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Jackie. You're welcome. Mm. So, Sylvester has got such a powerful testimony. It may be one that you think when you hear his testimony of um, just going through so much trauma and so much pain and so much suffering that this is an impossible situation for anybody to recover from mentally, spiritually, physically. But I want to tell you that we serve a God that is so powerful. And even though so much sin has happened to him, he didn't even ask for it. So many things happened to Sylvester. In fact, Sylvester is a product of rape. And I want to encourage you. It doesn't matter what you are a product of. The word of God says that you are a child of God. You are created in God's image. Mm. And Romans 5 verse 20 tells us, that where sin abounds, grace abounds so much more. So no matter how much sin has happened to you or has come from you, the Lord says that grace abounds so much more for you. Sylvester, welcome. Thank you we so much. We are so excited to have you here today. You know, I listened mm. to your testimony and as I was listening to it, I had a good cry. Because yeah. I can relate to a lot of the things that you, you went through, you mm. know. Mm. Tell me, Sylvester, a little bit about your childhood growing up. Mm. So my childhood has got two aspects to it, Jackie. Um, mm. The happy side, mm -hmm. where I was extremely happy as a child. Um, growing up under my maternal grandmother, uh, she raised me. But that first seven years of my life that I really count as the happiest times of my childhood were, were replaced uh, when my mom got married. So for the first seven years, I didn't have a father figure. And how it was explained to me was that because they were not married, that's why I didn't know him and I was a child. So I had no reason to question anything. Uh, but over the coming years, I would question a lot of things. Uh, the affection that I didn't receive, the compassion that I didn't receive. Um, I was not disciplined with love. Uh, so you, were actually a dis you were actually disciplined with a lot of abuse. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, that wasn't the worst part of it. Mm. Tell us what happened to you. The age of nine, uh, I was sexually violated. Um, by a family member, uh, something that I knew was was wrong, uh, but I had no one to to cry to 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 tell exactly what was happening to me. Because it's so shameful to speak to people, yeah, and you feel like it's your fault. Yeah, I think every person that has gone through any kind of sexual violation, mm. the first thing that they experience is shame, and mm. maybe I'm the reason that this has happened. Mm. Yeah, my. I lost my self-worth. Mm. Uh, I'm a boy who's about to become a man and here's another man touching me and doing things to me that were inappropriate. Uh, almost like what is it about me that makes this man find attractive about me? Mm. Uh, but it, it didn't stop. Um, uh, How long did it go on for Sylvester? A couple of years, yeah, a couple of years. Um, then when I used to take a school bus, uh, there was this old man who used to go get his pension uh, once a month and he would travel on the bus and he sat next to me. That's something that was not uncommon uh, because we shared, you know, transport with uh, you know, people who are going to work and so on. Uh, it was a public transport. And he did the same thing. Uh, he would fondle me, uh, want me to touch him. And in return, he would buy me gifts. Sure. Yeah. That's actually, I know that they talk about that as the blesser phenomenon, mm -hmm. where, um, uh, where you, you, you buy things for mm -hmm. young children mm -hmm. And actually then 
um, take advantage you have the of right them. to mm. take advantage of them because you mm. buying things for them and they actually groom mm. these children mm. to believe that they are actually at fault. That's why they don't get into trouble. They don't get caught. Mm. Now, how did God heal you from that mm. situation? I know you first you got married mm. and mm. you went through some things. Mm. Um, and the marriage wasn't really entirely a happy marriage. Mm. Tell us what happened there. I got saved again uh, in 2004. Uh, I grew up in a religious home and my relationship with God was strained because the man who raised me was abusing me. Uh, I did not see a heart of love. And for me, it was this is a man who goes to church religiously every Sunday. He would not miss church and he would not allow me to miss church. But I looked at it with my young mind even then and I said, well, if that's how somebody who worships God behaves, I don't want to follow that life. I, yeah. I'd rather not have God in my life because if that's the product of somebody who praises God, then I just want to be a good person. And that's the declaration I made to myself. I said, I just want to be a good person. Um, so I had a strained relationship with God because this man who was a reflection of, you know, relationship with God was not what I would, uh, you know, in any stretch of the imagination see as a good embodiment of that. But in 2004, um, I got born again. Um, I had actually run away from home uh, after getting involved in a very ugly fight um, with the man who was raising me. And for the first time in my life, um, at the age of 20, I actually had a voice. I actually called him Satan. Mm. I, uh, out of anger, I had so much anger within me and I was afraid of him. And I called him Satan. I said, you've got such a bad heart. Mm. And of course, I got a very good beating, <laughs> uh, even at the age of 20. Yeah. But an uncle of mine who really has, has been that type of man that uh, I would look at his relationship with, with Christ and I would be like, you know, I, I marvel at the type of man that he is just because of his heart. Uh, I went to church with him and I just felt the Holy Spirit overcome me. Wow. And I gave my life to, to Christ. Um, but it was the start. It was not the end of a very hard journey. Mm -hmm. I know you've told me that you've also been through a divorce, yeah. which you've acknowledged was mostly your fault because mm -hmm. um, you hadn't dealt with the abuse that you went through mm -hmm. from your dad, from this guy on the transport. Mm -hmm. um, you hadn't dealt with it. And all mm -hmm. of that crept into your marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, you committed a lot of infidelity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you caused a lot of pain to the people that you loved, right? I did. How did you get through that? I got to a point of no return, um, 13th of July, 2019. I had planned to take my own life um, because of the shame of my infidelity, which had led to me uh, losing a lucrative contract and in that shame and self-condemnation, I figured that the best route out was to take my own life. Uh, I was in just so much pain. And that's the thing with self-condemnation. I started thinking about everything that had happened to me in life that I, I didn't ask for the type of childhood that I had. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for the brokenness that I had experienced. And Do you I feel just, like life was unjust and unfair? Yeah. I just wanted to quieten the pain. Mm. Yeah. I had done everything. I had written suicide notes. I had at least thought I had done everything to prepare for my own death. I, I knew the time and hour uh, that I would commit suicide, uh, which would have been on the 15th of July, uh, between 2 and 4 p.m. Wow. Uh, to plan so you to, planned it like to the T. Did you plan yeah. on telling anybody? No. So you, you were really, really serious. I, I wanted to go to my grave with my shame 
uh, I told the woman that I had extramarital affairs with uh, that this is what I was going to do and that they shouldn't contact my phone uh, because from 4 p.m. on the 15th my wife would have my phone and therefore I didn't want her to find out uh, so I thought I could actually tell them to just forget I ever existed mm. and the Holy Spirit said to me you don't want to leave your family poor so you've made sure that you've got adequate life cover but just go and check one of the policies what the exclusion and suicide is sure and I had gone through the document earlier in the day but I didn't even think about that but the Holy Spirit says just hang on a bit I went and looked at the document and the two-year anniversary, which was the exclusion, two years before, you know, if you commit suicide, was in two weeks' time, 1st of August. So now you had to wait another two weeks. Yeah, I actually said to myself, oh, <laughs> I guess I have to postpone by two weeks. Wow. Because you love your children so much. Mm. You didn't want to leave your children yeah. feeling like they had nothing mm, left. That's the truth, yeah. And I think that love mm. for your children mm. was probably your saving grace. Absolutely has but been. Sylvester, mm. I have a question for you. Mm. So you got saved in 2004. Yes. But you didn't really live the Christian life until mm. 2019 mm. when God reached out and, t and mm. touched your life, right? Mm. So tell us what happened after you decided to postpone the suicide. So I'd say the period between 2004 and 2019 was my wilderness in many respects. But what happened when, so Holy Spirit said, you will tell your wife the truth. You will live a life that's pleasing to me as your God. I'm giving you a second chance, but you've got to start this second chance on a clean slate mm -hmm. and with the truth. I immediately told her the truth. And her response to me was very surprising, so unexpected. She said to me, besides your infidelity, you're a good man. Uh, wow. So if you're willing to make it work, then I'm willing to make it work. That's the grace of God. Yeah. Because the truth does set us free yeah. when we're honest. Un unmerited favor uh, sure. in all respects. But I immediately felt light when the weight of the sin was off me. I immediately felt light. I stopped sobbing because I was sobbing the whole day because everything represented last moments for me. And I began a very painful, hard journey, but one that I knew there was no going back, which was to leave that life behind. And I can proudly say sitting here today that I have left that life behind of promiscuity mm. and feeling that I needed somebody to fulfill me because you can't expect another human being to fulfill you. No. Only God can can do that. There's uh, a vacuum. Yeah. I ho I've heard this analogy for mm. many years. There's a mm. vacuum in your heart mm. that only God can fill. Yeah. There's no man, no husband, no. no wife, no child. Absolutely. That can fill that. And mm. sometimes it may feel like they do, but it's only temporary. Mm. So um, mm. you obviously got into the presence of God mm. and allowed God to wash you with the word. Yes. Now, I know that can be a painful process mm. because it's not just something that you feel. It's mm. a choice that you have to make. Yes. Tell us how you got to that place where you started allowing the Lord to purify your life with his word. I said, I will not live in shame. Mm. I have to take responsibility and accountability for the things that I have done for my own wrongs. But I know that God gave me a good heart. Mm. And I had to look at that which really was going to take me forward and not backwards. Because the devil was very quick to say, well, you think you are done with that life, you are not done with it. And there were a number of tests. Mm. The, because he reminded mm, you as well, mm, you're a product yeah, of rape. Yeah. You'd also just found out I that... I didn't even know at the time that I was a product yes, of rape. Yes, because you'd also just found out that your father wasn't your biological father. Yeah. I, the man who abused yeah, you. Yeah, I found wow. out in 2015. And my infidelity went into overdrive. 
at the time I was not aware of exactly what was driving it, but there was a spirit that was driving mm. uh, this very reckless behavior. Uh, I actually found out that I was a product of rape in December of 2019. Wow. And it's just funny, and maybe funny is not the word, but we serve a God of purpose. Yeah. And I look at the period of time up to 13th of July 2019 as really having been preparation for this journey that I'm now on. God had to deal with my character. Even though I was born again in 2004, I was not ready to serve God. Mm. I was not ready to serve him. I was not ready to be obedient to him. Because as much as God fulfills the desires of our hearts, it's only if those desires are in line with his will. Exactly. And I think I was not ready for, yes. for any of that. So I found out in December of 2019 that I was born of rape. Uh, but here's what I said. Something that one would have expected would have broken me and hence the title of my book i said i may not have been my mother's choice but i know i was god's choice amen i love that and i have so much comfort in just knowing that mm. and therefore what was meant to break me did not break me if anything it gave me a greater purpose that my life was meant to glorify God, mm. that where I come from did not define who I am, you know, so. And did you mm. find that when you brought everything into the light, mm. the abuse, mm. the shame, mm. the, the infidelity, mm. you started walking in freedom, right? Yes. Because when, when we bring all of that into the light, mm. we are able to allow God mm. to bring us freedom mm. because he's the one you know sometimes the way of the world mm. doesn't make sense because the world will hide their shame mm. the world will hide the um their abuse and mm. pride and all that kind mm. of thing right mm. but with god when we bring those things into the light we actually i remember when i had to speak about mm. um to a counselor about the rape that i went through mm. um the abuse that i went through i had so much shame but when i decided i made a choice i said lord everything i've been through mm. i will not let it be for nothing mm. Absolutely. as long as you will Heal, heal me, I will not allow this to be for nothing. Mm. So you need to use this to glorify mm. your, your word, glorify mm. that you are a supernatural God mm. who can heal anything. A redeemer. Uh, yes. Ab absolutely. And so, sin but you have only to be has willing. power in darkness. Yes. So you in have darkness, to be willing you know? to let God heal you, right? Absolutely. You have to be willing to let him heal you. Mm. You have to mm. choose life. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It's it's a it's a choice that I I had to make because I had suffered a spiritual death in that period of my infidelity. I had suffered a spiritual death, but I actually saw my physical death if I continued mm. on that path that I was on uh, of self destruction. But here's the other thing. And, and I mean, when I found out about the rape, uh, I said, God has always had his hand upon me. Yes. He's truly been my only father. Mm. And I could not do anything but want to serve him. And as much as there was attacks, there were attacks, family members, close friends, people I thought were friends, who now were shunning away from me. Yeah. But I said, well, I'm not about pleasing men. I'm about pleasing God. Wow. And if I was doing this for me, trust me, it would have been the most difficult mm. thing to be this vulnerable. But I knew that I wasn't doing it for me. Mm. And therefore, it wasn't about who's going to be critical of it. Because I similarly was not looking for anybody to clap hands and applaud what I was doing. I just needed to do what God had called me to do. But also, I think when you know that God has set you free, mm. your heart becomes that you want to have others be set free, mm. right? Mm. So, Sylvester, mm. in the interim, yes. when you started this road of repentance and allowing God to wash you with his word, mm. you um, 
God restored your business. Mm. You became successful again. Yes. You've written a book. Yes. You've started a, a ministry. Mm. What mm. is your ministry about? It's a foundation, uh, the Sylvester Mashilo Foundation. And the foundation really for me is an acknowledgement that there's a lot of brokenness in our society. But that if we take an approach of blame and judgment, then we alienate a section of society that is important for us mm. to be able to heal the brokenness. Mm. And I always remember the words, uh, you know, when Christ, um, you know, was with the woman who was an adulterer and people wanted to stone her. And he said, let he who has no sin be the first to cast the stone. And nobody did. Mm. But what he said to the woman was important. You know, he said, nobody condemns you. Neither do I condemn you. So go and sin no more. So the foundation is really about the mentorship of the boy child, raising the boy child, not for to be good for society, to be good for themselves, mm. for the benefit of society. Because when I look at my life, and I mean, my life is a lesson of how a society, sometimes we miss intervening at the right time. I can tell you, I can point a finger at what moment in life things went wrong. Mm. When I didn't have a father figure, when I had a man in my life who was meant to be a father who instead inflicted wound and pain. Mm. That in our society, we sit with over 60% of children, according to Stats SA, at the age of 18, over 60% don't have an active father in their life. So we have to fill the gap. We have to mm. stand in the gap. There's a lot of anger and brokenness and resentment in our society. We have to address it. We have to deal with it. Mm. And we can only do so if we really acknowledge that in of ourselves, we cannot save ourselves. So the ministry is centered on Christ the Redeemer. Uh, so that's important for us as a foundation. And it's important for the boy child to know who God says he is. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. So I just want to encourage you today, family. And I want to tell you that, as I said, when we started this uh, conversation, this testimony today, in Romans, 5, in Romans 5 verse 20, it says that where sin abounds, grace abounds so much more. Mm -hmm. If you're going through a season in your life that you feel it's impossible for God to deliver me, just remember that God's grace abounds so much more. And today, we're not going to close in prayer today, but I would like to just make a declaration over you today. If you have an impossible situation, the Lord says that you are His beloved. You are the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. You are above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Don't criticize yourself. When you do that, you're saying to God, well, you know what, you did a bum job with me. Mm -hmm. And that's pride. That's pride in your heart. Allow God to wash you with His Word. Get into His presence, get into His Word. And I promise you, I'm a product. And Sylvester here, my friend, is a product of the mercy and the grace of God to redeem the most impossible situations. Don't, don't be self-rejecting. Go to God and let Him show you His mercy, His love, His grace, and His acceptance for you today. Sylvester, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's I want to give you a little you. gift just to remind oh, you how important you. your testimony is to us thank you so and much. to all the viewers out there. I'm pretty sure that there are so many people that are going to be set free listening to your testimony. If you want to get hold of Sylvester, his details will be on the screen and he has got a book out. You can contact him and he'll tell you how to get hold of that book. And uh, Sylvester, we want to bless you with this just to remind you, Thank you so much. just how special your testimony Thank you is. So much. And just to keep doing the work that the Lord has called you to do. Mm. So 
Guys, if you have not subscribed yet, give us a thumbs up. And if you know that there is someone going through a situation that seems impossible, please share this video with them. We would so love to encourage them. If this video has encouraged you, send us, send us a word of encouragement and let us know how it has. And if you need prayer, send us your prayer requests. We are faithful to pray for each and every one of you every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you rest.